Hi my beauties. Okay, so today's video is gonna be on lower face rejuvenation. So a lot of dermatologists and plastic surgeons and cosmetic dermatologists in the aesthetic community are talking about this era in medicine as Zoom Boom. And Zoom Boom is kind of a real thing. And I think it's because of quarantine and working from home and COVID, a lot of people are on Zoom meetings or looking at themselves from kind of like a downward view and not liking what they see. Um, and it's gotten a lot of people into our offices and clinics um, asking for lower face rejuvenation. So this can happen for people of all ages, men, women, young, mid, older, more mature, all different types of patients have different ailments or different things that they like to change about their lower face. Um, this isn't gonna be a neck or chest um, video because I've already posted a video on this, on that subject. So this is just pertaining to like jawline contour, jowls, pre-jowl sulcus, mandibular resorption, tightening up the jawline, excess adipose or double chin fat, all that good stuff. So um, there's lots of different things that we can do and everything I discuss of course is non-surgical because I'm a cosmetic dermatologist, not a plastic surgeon. So although I am a dermatologic surgeon, most of my you know, skin surgery procedures um, aren't really cosmetic because that's more, you know, lasers, energy-based devices, and um, less invasive procedures to help make you look and feel your very best. So starting with the with the easiest um, treatment to help sharpen and define the jawline, one that I'm very busy in my clinic with because a lot of people really like this one, and that's a Nefertiti lift using Botox to kind of sharpen and define the jawline. So a lot of people, don't really know how that works. So I'd like to explain. I don't just do procedures. I like to educate my patients and um, explain why we're doing things, the mechanisms of action and how they work. So all of the muscles in the face and neck are antagonistic, protagonistic. They're all kind of pushing and pulling on one another. And when you knock one muscle group out, sometimes you have a compensatory um, reaction from the other muscle group that's kind of going against it. So we can use that in our favor. And so the Nefertiti lift is what we do about 10 units of Botox along the jawline and it basically knocks out the muscles that pull down which allow the muscles that pull up to go unopposed which helps sharpen and define that jawline. So even people who have a pretty well defined jawline it'll make it pop even more and it looks really beautiful from like profile angles and selfies or when your friends take pictures of you and posts when you're not really aware that they're going to be taking a picture of you you just know that you're going to look good from every angle because doing a little bit of sharpening along that jawline just really it has a really beautiful cosmetic and aesthetic contouring of the jawline. So um, usually, you know, Botox lasts about three to six months. Um, usually in that area, it lasts a little bit longer than other areas of the face. So it's usually more along the lines of six months and it's very safe and effective. And again, 20 units, 10 units per side is all it usually takes. So that's for jawline contouring using Botox, which is probably the easiest treatment to do because it's reversible. It takes about 30 seconds to do, or maybe a minute to do. And um, it's, it's a really great thing to do just to kind of enhance your natural beauty. Um, another very common treatment that we do is Kybella. Kybella is deoxycholic acid. It's a fat dissolving injectable. And so where people have a little bit extra fat right here, men have it a lot too. Even if you're fit or thin or you know, don't really have much fat anywhere else, sometimes people like to hold on to a little sedimental fat right here. So when they're like looking down or when they're on FaceTime or on Zoom, they feel like full here, like their jawline contour is at it, its best or from the um, AP um, anterior pro posterior projection um, angle that angle isn't really sharp. So by melting a little bit of fat here, it's super easy, super quick, and it's a lot, in my opinion, safer than liposuction because liposuction in that area, it's kind of you know invasive. It's more invasive procedure, and Kybella is just an injectable that we can do in the office. It you know takes about five minutes. Um, there's some downtime. There's a little bit of inflammation and swelling that can happen, but that actually also stimulates collagen to help retract that skin back. They actually did a lot of research studies in this regard too, that not only does it melt fat, but it helps stimulate collagen to kind of retract that skin back as well. So sometimes for this area, multiple treatments may be needed. We do Kybella on other areas of the body too, like bra fat, back fat, but that's a different video for a different time since we're focusing on the um, submental or under the chin jawline area. And usually it's about one to two vials. And if we're gonna do multiple treatments, like two or three treatments, um, you get a jump in improvement each time. Sometimes people have one treatment and they're like, great, I love these results, I'm done with it, let's stop there. Some people are like, ooh, I'm loving my jawline, this is looking good, I love my profile, let's do more. So if people want additional treatments, usually we say wait about six to eight weeks 
between treatments. And then usually you have to wait at least six weeks before you start to see any improvement. And usually it continues to improve after you know the first treatment. So say you come in for your second treatment, you're gonna improve from your second treatment and then also get results from your first treatment as well. So it just keeps, you know, it's all additive and it gets better and better. Um, the biggest downside of Kybella is, be, is that it can, you know, cause some swelling and that can make things look worse temporarily. So say people have a little bit of submental fat or a double chin that's barely noticeable, then they get injected and then they like look like they really have a double chin for like a week or so and then that goes back and then they look back to normal and then it starts improving about six to eight weeks later. So that's Kybella. Um, it's a really safe and effective treatment. I mean, if it's in the wrong hands or somebody really doesn't know what they're doing and they're injecting it in the wrong area, there could be some side effects, but from all intents and purposes, it's usually pretty straightforward, usually very low risk procedure. So that's Kybella. We talk about Botox, Kybella, and then another treatment that's very popular among my younger patients and my more mature patients also is Thermage or you know any energy-based device, or therapy, Thermotite, Thermage. Energy-based devices are not lasers um, just because it's not collimated light. Instead, it's energy, and for Thermage, which is my favorite energy-based device, it's radio frequency. So what radio frequency does is it dumps heat into the skin. Whenever we put heat into the skin in a very controlled manner, it keeps the epidermis or the upper layer of the skin cool while it gently heats the um, lower area of the dermis where all the fibroblasts are to stimulate collagen to lift, tighten, and pull. It's a really great treatment for along the jawline. And so people who start this like in their 20s and even if they start in their 40s and their 50s and 60s, they won't need a lower facelift and they won't need a neck lift because they're being proactive. You have to remember that you lose about 10% of collagen each decade, which is super sad. I remember learning that in my dirt residency and I'm like, ugh, that's just such a bummer. Then I went in and I was like, they're watching myself after a lecture. But, um, but basically you lose about 10% of your collagen each year. So if you start early, I always tell my patients start like in your thirties, if you can, if you're, you know, really wanting to be proactive and doing everything you can to keep yourself looking your best without the need for surgery later on, you basically do with module with the lower face and it just will help keep a lot of collagen, you know, in that area will help keep the skin nice and tight. Histologically, under the microscope, you have a ton of collagen, super healthy, you know, active cells that are making lots of collagen and elastin. So as you lose collagen in the years to come, you're kind of staying in the same place, which is the true meaning of anti-aging. And it's beautiful because you're inducing your body's own natural regenerative processes to kind of combat the aging that's to come. So. Um, you know, usually patients start in their 30s or 40s. If you're in your 40s or 50s, even and you're starting to get a little sagginess here and you haven't started, their module have been very proactive to date. It's not the end of the world. We could totally reverse it. Usually one treatment is needed and the results last about a year. Um, for Thermage, you start to notice results about two months after the treatment, but it continues to get better for a year. So I actually don't usually recommend patients doing a Thermage treatment in the same area within a year time frame because you're still getting the benefit from the Thermage treatment, you know, a year after the procedure. So at least wait a year and then, you know, you can do it again. But ideally, the collagen that gets stimulated from Thermage, the half-life of collagen is about three to four years. So you're good for like every five years. And I say if you start doing Thermage every five years or so, it's one of the best things that you can do. You're investing up front, you know, in your, you know, in your skin, in your health, in the way that you look, because then later on you won't have to have some surgery that's going to make you look different than you really are, or that will be high risk or something that you don't want to have done. So, you know, in 2021, this is the year of, you know, technology and all of these non-surgical options to keep our skin looking and acting its best so that you don't need surgery down the line. And keep in mind that surgery isn't magic. You know, even if you get a nip, tuck, pull, sutures, like undergo a whole lower face or neck lift, um, gravity always takes its toll. So if your skin is enhanced histologically or on a cellular level to act and behave younger, you won't need that surgery. And if you do have surgery in the future, it'll last longer because your surgeon will effectively be operating on younger skin. So that's Thermage. So we talked about Botox, Kybella, Thermage, and now there's other things that we, we can do as well. So um, kind of going from you know the least invasive to the more invasive um, procedures, um, doing filler in the jawline is, is tricky. You know, I wouldn't just go to somebody who really doesn't have that much experience. You have to understand the process that happens with the aging face, the lower face, and this can vary based on, based on your genetic background, your ethnicity, um, different, you know, groups and populations have different um, ways that they age. And so really understanding the 
um, bony structure of one's face. You can also look at your parents or grandparents and kind of see like, oh, well, my mom didn't have under eye bags, but she had gels, and so I need to stay on top of that one. That's usually, you know, where my more on top of it patients um, kind of like look to see what's coming down the pipeline and they stay ahead of it so that they never get to that point. And so um, if you look at the aging face or skull, um, again, I remember learning this in school too and it was really sad, but you know, it's just part of life and part of aging and it's not that you wanna reverse it or stop it from happening, you just wanna make sure that you look your best. And so, um, you know, if you look at the aging skull, like a, the mandible, so you know, you have your, your skull, your cranium, you have your mandible, which is your lower face and, and jawline, the bone resorbs over time. So if you look at, you know, at the aging face in the um, timeline of, you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and so forth, the dermis gets thinner, the, you know, the, the skin gets thinner, the muscles get more atrophic or thinner as well, and you get bony resorption. So the actual skull, like, kind of shrinks over time. And so you get bony resorption of the mandible, and that starts to happen, like, right here. And if you add a little bit of filler there, it can actually pull that skin back because once our mandible starts getting resorbed in our 50s, is usually when this happens, or studies show that it starts to happen in our 50s, um, basically, you know, you start to have a little pre jaw sulcus area here, you get laxity, and you kind of get these little pooches right here because that bone it, that used to be holding up that skin is no longer there. So basically, adding a little bit of filler right here in the angle of the jaw can kind of lift and help pull up on that area. Also, doing it in the pre jaw sulcus to help continue on that aesthetic line and curvature of the jawline. If it kind of pinches in here and does this little like bubble thing, then it kind of breaks up that line and it doesn't have a very pleasing aesthetic look to it. So, by adding a little filler right here, it can really enhance that jawline contour and give a really youthful look. So, things like this that we learn in aesthetics fellowship, when the eyes scan the face, the brain perceives things as like young old or healthy or sick and that's one of the things is like a sharpened and defined jawline that has a continued curvature looks more youthful and just looks more aesthetically pleasing so doing a little bit of um, filler right here in the pre-jaw sulcus or doing a little filler here to kind of help lift that back um, has a really really beautiful result and as an injector I'm pretty conservative even despite the fact that I'm a surgeon I like to do like baby steps so I'll never or rarely will I ever treat a patient and do it here and do a little bit here and then do it up here. I like to do one thing at a time. If you're a patient of mine, you know that this is how I operate. Do a little bit here, see how that looks, and then you know take before and after pictures and then come back and we can do a little bit more here and that'll enhance it even further. So there's different mechanisms of action um, with respect to fillers on like how they can help enhance, you know, you know, one's contour, jawline contour, but doing one at a time is a little bit more simple, it's more conservative, it's easier on the patient because then you have, you know, less bruising or swelling. That area doesn't bruise and swell too much anyway, but you know, the less you inject the first time or in one session, the better, you know, the results are and you make successive approximations to your goal. And then you can see what filler is doing what. So, you know, I'll definitely choose a certain type of filler depending on the dermal plane that I'm gonna be in, what goal I'm trying to achieve, how much bone resorption or bony loss is there, how much do I need to yank that skin up there. And there's different types of fillers that are engineered to perform differently in different areas of the faces and have of the face and have different what we call G prime. A high G prime is um, a, is a is a more thick, like more viscous filler that would have to be a little bit more, you know, strong with respect to like the pull that it has on the skin versus a lower G prime would be a thinner, less viscous, less thick filler that would be ideal for like something like the tear troughs or like lip filler or like lip lines, things like that where it's being injected a little bit more superficially. So usually, you know, Wrestle and Lift, Voluma, I love those fillers for right here. pre gel Sulcus, I would love, you know, Velour or I don't really use Juvederm anymore because that's kind of old school, but um, RHA 3 or 4, there's different um, fillers that kind of perform better in different areas of the face depending on how much lift or pulling that you need and how much bony resorption has been lost. And then sometimes it's, um, you know, important to do filler not in, you know, the more mature patients who have had bony loss who have gels, but even in my younger patients who maybe have, you know, kind of like a hypoplastic chin and they don't really want to have a chin implant or have undergo surgery, but they're like projectile, you know, their AP projected profile is a little bit 
um, you know, is a little bit um, hypoplastic right here. They don't have much of, of a prominent chin. So doing a little bit of filler in the chin can really enhance um, somebody's profile and jawline contour from the side or from different angles as well. And especially when it's in combination with something like Kybella, kind of melting the fat here and making the chin a little bit more pronounced has a really, really beautiful like profile angle that will just kind of sharpen and define um, their feminine or masculine, if they're a guy, um, profile and jawline angle as well. So we talked about filler, Botox, Thermage. Um, we talked about thread lifts. Oh, no, we didn't talk about thread lifts. Okay, so the last and probably more invasive, even though it's still minimally invasive and non-surgical, is thread lifts. So thread lifts are a really, really great way to kind of lift up on the lower face and have really natural contour with really natural results without surgery. And the reason why I love thread lifts and you know I really perform them a lot in my office is because it's non-surgical, um, it's super conservative. It's very easy to get through from the patient's point of view, and you know, as you know, the provider, it's a very, it's a slam dunk every time. Everybody's always happy. They love their results. It's very natural, and it kind of improves the way that they look over, you know, a couple weeks to even one to two months afterwards. They keep getting better and better. And the reason is because not only do you have like a pulling mechanism of the threads, and the threads are just basically made up of suture material. So, um, you know, there's Nova threads, there's mint threads, there's all different kinds of threads, but the threads in and of themselves are made up of the same um, product as filler. So not only are you getting a lifting and like a mechanism of pulling of up on the lower face, or I mean, we can use threads everywhere, but since we're talking about the lower face, we get a pulling and kind of um, lifting mechanism. There's also a slow depot of filler that's going to stimulate collagen, stimulate elastin, stimulate hyaluronic acid synthesis, and just kind of make the um, lower face kind of have more volume, but not to where, you know, patients always worry that they're going to look too chubby or they're going to look like they have a round face. It just gives a really beautiful enhancement of the lower face, not only just by, mechanism, by the mechanism of pulling, but also by just kind of having that increased volume, which will help with like little smile lines here. It will help just overall, um, you know, with the aesthetics of that lower face without the need for surgery, which is really cool because a lot of people you know sometimes you're on the fence you're like oh I'm not ready for surgery or I don't want to want to go and I don't want to undergo surgery but I want a little something to buy me a couple years or say they're super young and they just want a little bit more tightness in the lower face dry lifts are the way to go so what happens is after about two years your immune system in your body breaks it down and it doesn't have any deleterious side effects. It doesn't, you know, become anything negative or like foreign in the body that your body reacts to. It basically just kind of like over, you know, two, two, maybe even three years kind of just breaks it down. And then you're like, ooh, I'm starting to get a little bit saggy again. Time to get, you know, dread lifts again or thermage or at that time maybe surgery. It's just up to you, but it's a very safe and effective procedure. So if you look online and you look at thread lifts and you Google it and you see all these negative side effects, when done by the wrong person or in the wrong hands, yes, there could be bad side effects, as with anything, you know? And so I think that people are a little bit too um, overzealous in performing this procedure who weren't adequately trained. I mean, even in my fellowship, I had to do thousands of cases, and this is because InstaLift had just, which is a thread lift company, had just launched, and we were doing the clinical trial, so I had to do like over a thousand cases of thread lifts with a world-renowned expert behind my back questioning every move I make, watching every move I make and questioning every, you know, every dermal plan I was in, every move that I made, she questioned it, but it really made me comfortable with this procedure. And then sometimes, you know, providers um, are performing this who aren't really well versed in this procedure and that those are the ones who have side effects. But, you know, side effects can include a little bit of fullness or lumps or the thread being shown through, but honestly, I've never, knock on wood, had any of these problems, nor have any of my colleagues who've been doing this for a very long time or who have adequate experience and you know training to do so. So we always joke around in medicine, it's like, well, that open heart surgery didn't really go well by the pediatrician. Well, the pediatrician is trained to treat kids and the cardiothoracic surgeon should have been performing the open heart surgery and it would have gone really well. So, you know, sometimes physicians or providers don't stay in their lane, which is fine, but as long as they have adequate training to do um, these procedures, they can go really, really well. So I don't want anybody to be deterred from having a thread lift because they're reading bad results from patients who may have suboptimal outcomes or even complications because it's actually a very safe and effective procedure and they've come a long way with the technology and the threads to where a lot of my patients who are thinking about surgery don't even have to have it and they're glad that they did it you know and my younger patients who aren't even surgical candidates because they're way too young um, really really benefit from thread lifts as well so it's one of the best things that you can do for the lower face now sometimes people say 
okay, Dr. Campbell, there's so many options. Like, how do we know which order to go in? Like I said, and like I started this talk, um, usually you want to go with the more minimally invasive first. Maybe start with a little Botox here. Maybe start with a little um, Thermage or something really minimally invasive. Then do a little bit of filler, see what that looks like. And if you really want to get a little bit more enhancement, then you can do Threadless. And you can combine all these procedures too. Sometimes, you know, if it's my, my first time seeing a patient and I see a consult and I'll say, you know, I really want to improve this area. I'll give them kind of a, a, you know, options, treatment options and have them make an informed decision on which one would work best for them. So um, that's kind of how I approach it. And those are the main non-surgical ways to enhance that lower face. And, you know, my patients have done really, really well. Um, I love seeing the results, you know, when they come in for follow-up with doing a combination of these therapies or one or two or three of these therapies together. And um, it's a slam dunk every time. So and especially with the zoom boom now where people are like looking at themselves from that upright view or friends are taking pictures of them from angles and they just really, really want to look their best. Um, I think it's a great thing to do. Lower face rejuvenation is uh, bumping right now. And so I hope this helps you guys and I hope that this answers any of your non-surgical questions for lower face rejuvenation. Love you.